Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and it is now time for another Ask a Herbert Erpaderp. Some of you might have been expecting to see Herbert Erpaderp's quick tips this week. Well, you aren't. Deal with it. Deal with it by waiting until Friday, I guess. I've decided to make some changes. I'm going to start doing Ask a Herbert Erpaderp every week again. It will be a little shorter each week, and probably more focused on responding to the things in the Ask a Herbert Erpaderp comment sections rather than other videos. But I will of course still mention things I feel like mentioning. Herbert Erpaderp's quick tips will continue being every second week, but it will now be on Fridays, or Wednesdays for patrons. The reason I'm not going to make those videos weekly too is because they take a little more work to make. Unless Patreon takes off really big, I can't really justify spending all of my time making videos. There will be no change to modelling videos, and they will continue to be on Mondays or Saturdays for patrons. And anything else I feel like doing will appear whenever I feel like it. By now you've probably noticed that the background video this week is World of Tanks, and it looks kind of like garbage. I mean, it's not that bad, but it's nowhere near as nice as this game can look. This first game is the first time I'd ever played on the Paris map, and it also demonstrates the aggressive and kind of reckless use of low tier tanks that makes me bad at World of Tanks, most of the time. The game is playable on low settings. These aren't actually the lowest settings, more like the second lowest, but they might as well be the lowest really. My PC, besides a lack of graphics card and adequate storage, is fairly decent, so it handles the game just fine. It just starts to chug a little bit if I boost the graphics settings a little more than this. So I can play the game and I've been grinding some tanks. Well, in so much as I actually grind tanks, which is to say I have a few that I play once or twice and am actively trying to get the next vehicle in that line, I wouldn't call what I actually do grinding. So anyway, I've been playing a bit and having some fun. Though the population of the Asia server does make it trying, it's still fun. It just looks like garbage and I can't really save a lot of gameplay without the risk of running out of hard drive space. What I would like to know is would you guys be interested in seeing some World of Tanks gameplay with the graphics set so low, assuming something amusing enough to make a video about happens. I think for the most part it's not really worth the effort if it doesn't look good, but I would still like to hear your opinions. How about World of Warships? I haven't tried it yet, but I assume it will also be perfectly playable on low settings. Just not looking very good. Let me know what you think in the comments below. That's enough jibber jabber, let's get to some questions and comments. Pug says, Hey Herbert, can you please play some Ravenfield at some point? It's a new free game and it's also a lot of fun. Thanks for posting this on my birthday. You're certainly welcome. You know, when I started doing these videos, I chose Wednesday because I knew your birthday would fall on a Wednesday and I wanted you to have an Ask a Herbert Herbert Herb for your birthday. I'm such a generous and thoughtful fellow. I've checked out Ravenfield and I really quite enjoyed it. I played it for about an hour earlier before starting work on Ask a Herbert Herbert Herb. In other words, keep an eye out for a video about it tomorrow. Or if you're a patron, it's up already and you can check it out now. Boon Gaming YT says, You should try Academy's 135th scale tanks. I've built one and it fits well with some filing here and there. Monday's preview video and its T3485s? Heck yeah! P.S. If you had a choice between a KV2 and a King Tiger to buy, which would you choose? Why not both? Okay, that's a lame answer. I guess it depends on whose money it is. If somebody else is paying, I think I'll take a King Tiger, because that's a more rare and valuable tank. If I have to pay for it myself, a KV-2 is probably much cheaper, though it would still be an amazing thing to have, especially if it ran. About the Academy tanks, I have actually built one, the Hetzer. I built it quite a while ago, though I did do a video about it way back in January 2015. It's not a very good video, but it's nice to see that my videos are improving over time. I'm definitely interested in picking up more Academy models. If anyone has a suggestion for a particularly good kit by Academy, you know where it goes. No, don't put that there. It goes in the comments section. Gah. Some people. The Big Boy says, If you could own 10 weapons, what would you like to have? And he's included a list of weapons he would like to have. I don't really know. It's not something I've put a lot of thought into. I do like the comments mentioning tanks. Can I just have a list of 10 tanks? Tanks are a weapon? A collection of the various guns from World War II would be nice. You know, stuff like Bren and Sten guns, Garands, an MG42, things like that. A P90 would be cool too. 
I like that gun mostly because it's what they use on Stargate. I've never really been one for coming up with lists, so this answer is probably a little bit lame. Lennart Hoek says, Nice video. By the way, although I can see why some people are jealous about us Dutchies being able to speak multiple languages, it's really difficult at school learning three or four languages at the same time. I'm in my final year of high school and I've got a heck of a lot to study if I want to get my certificate. I bet it's hard work. Keep at it though. For me, it's not just being jealous of multiple languages, but I guess the educational systems in general. I have no idea how much or if things have changed. I've been out of school for a long time, but schools here seem to be more for educating people just enough to work in factories and mines and the like, rather than nurturing creativity and teaching people how to think for themselves and be a citizen of the world. I guess it's because we kind of have an anti-intellectual culture here. Kids are really encouraged to be all about sports, and if you aspire to learn or do something interesting or different, a lot of people get all bent out of shape. I often hear people bitching about uni students for no reason other than they're pursuing education rather than doing menial labour, like the people bitching do. You wanna learn? What, you think you're fucking better than me? You fucking wanker! That's a good example of what your average bogan is like. Dumb people with tall poppy syndrome make the world a much worse place. And it's hard to ignore that sort of thing, especially when you're young. It's much easier to just go along with the crowd and fit in. Obviously I've never been to school anywhere else, so maybe my perceptions are a little bit warped, but it seems to me people in Europe are largely encouraged to work hard, get a good education and better themselves, and get a good job, rather than aspiring to work in the mines. I think I'm starting to ramble. I was trying to make these videos shorter. Jacob says, This video was 18 minutes long. Give Mem a dollar. I've got your dollar right here. Ah, look how shiny it is. Wait, putting money in your mouth is stupid. I'm not going to do that. No, it's my dollar. Mine. Sparkle, sparkle. Jacob also says, Hey Herbert, do you plan on getting the new Flames of War M10 platoon? You know, the plastic version. I do. I'm pretty excited about that. There's also new plastic tigers and pumas and I'm excited about those too. Not only that, but there's a whole bunch of 28mm scale stuff that I want to get too. I want to say it's frustrating how much good stuff just keeps coming out, but it's not. It's awesome and I don't want it to stop. It's the money that's frustrating, or rather the lack of it. I will get the models eventually, it's just a matter of time. At the moment I have to make the choice between upgrading my PC from a functional PC to a nice gaming PC or buying more models. At the moment I want to improve the PC. On Monday's video about the GHQ Micro T3485s, Daniel says, Will you build any Tamiya 148th scale tanks in the future? I don't have any Tamiya 148th scale tanks at the moment, though I will likely pick one up at some point. I do have a tank kit in that scale from Hobby Boss that I intend to build very soon. Not quite the same as Tamiya, but it was cheap and I figured why not. Should be a fun build. Potato Inc. says, Hi Herbert, could you build a Plastic Warlord T3485? I'm getting one for Christmas and I'm quite inexperienced in models and I would like something to refer to while making it so I don't stuff up. I'd like to, but I don't have one on hand at the moment to build, and I don't really have any plans to get one in the immediate future. It's something I will do, but definitely not before Christmas, which now that I think about it is really soon. Like I was saying before, there's a lot of really cool models out there that I want to get my hands on, but just don't have the budget for. The Warlord Plastic T3485s being one of them. I'm sure it's not too difficult a kit to build though. Just take your time and pay attention to the instructions. The best way to stop being inexperienced is to just do things. I guess that's the only way really. On my solo bolt action video also from Monday, Cooper Hamlin says, Nice games workshop tape measure. Also, you might want to include more buildings, even if they can't be occupied. Blocking line of sight really helps the flow of bolt action. The game's workshop tape measure is very tape measurey. It's also the only tape measure that I've somehow managed to not lose over the years. I do agree that more buildings would be good. I had initially figured that having a more open table would lead to a quicker game with less time spent moving guys into position and more time shooting, but I think it would be interesting to have more manoeuvring too. The main reason for the limited terrain is I don't really have a lot of 28mm scale buildings, especially not painted ones. 
I do plan to get my hands on some more of the Ewar kits from Plastcraft, and I have been considering making some quick and simple buildings from Foam Core. Probably some quick and simple ruined buildings. I suppose I could also use the 15mm scale Ewar buildings too. They would at least provide adequate blocking of line of sight. I would also like to get a mat for the tabletop, the kind you can put stuff underneath to make hills and such, kind of like what Wahoo Warrior uses. I think the ones he uses are from Cigar Box Battle Mats. That's a kind of roundabout way of saying, more terrain will be included in the next video. I'll probably also try some tank war too, because I have so many tanks, why not use them? BSM Iron Panzer LOL says, says Lieutenant instead of Lieutenant, triggered XD XD XD. What's wrong with saying Lieutenant? Lieutenant is how the word is written. Lieutenant makes less sense to me than Lieutenant. The way I pronounce most of my words skews towards the British side, but Lieutenant always just sounded kind of wrong to me. Road Warrior John says, That moment in the video when you start thinking it's not Britain vs Germany, but Britain vs the undead then headless soldiers. Failed morality tests and the inability to shoot ground units accurately start to make a lot more sense. It's true. I think we need to experiment to find out if these headless, undead models start doing better with their morale and shooting when they're given heads. It might help. Further research is needed. They could also be compared with actual models of undead Germans, like the ones you can get for Conflict 47. This train of thought is kind of silly, but it's silly for science. Shix Lowe says, I challenge you to a model duel. Well, how do you duel, you say? 28mm tanks at dawn. I do my killing before breakfast. Yeehaw! <laughs> uh, that was sensible. The Solo Wargaming Show says, Yeah, you would need a separate order die for that PR team in the Bren. However, if you activate an officer, he can snap to and activate other units like the Bren or PR team, but he must do his move first. Good video, but you're making me look bad, Herbert. The solo bat rep was supposed to be my bailiwick. I figured that would be the case. I'll be sure not to make the same mistake in future games. Hopefully. It did occur to me that the officer could use his snap 2 order, which I think is a really cool new rule, but he would need to be within 6 inches to do that. This is something to remember for the future if I have an officer in a transport with another unit. I did want to try out the snap 2 thing, but never saw a good opportunity for it. One day. Also, today I learned what a bailiwick is. You certainly do have the right name for solo war games, and you've probably got a much better grasp on the rules than I do, so I think your bailiwick is safe, for now. So that's about it for the questions and comments. What do you guys think about resuming weekly Ask a Herbert Erbida? The videos will mostly be shorter and I'm trying to be more concise, maybe a little less rambly. I mean, I do script my answers, but then when I record them I often ramble off script anyway. Maybe you guys like that. I guess what I'm trying to say is, feedback please. Or even if it's not feedback on the videos themselves, you can, as always, ask any questions or leave any comments or suggestions you might have in the comments section below. And of course, don't forget to do all of the other YouTube things like clicking like, sharing and subscribing. If you really like the videos I make, please consider helping to support the channel via Patreon. Doing so will allow you to see my videos a little early and some patron only bonus content. The November outtakes video is coming soon. It will also help me to buy more of the models you want to see me build and paint. As always, I shall return soon. So until then, happy modelling, gaming and whatever else you're doing, and thanks for watching. Farewell.